please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Suplex City! Suplex City! Limits! Suplex! City! Limits! Suplex! City! Limits! With your esteemed host, Jim! This is where I'm at in life. All that separates me from the projects is a fucking chain link fence. That's Tyler Fudge! Have anything else to talk about on About this show? Yeah. You want to talk about Mil Masco some more? <laughs> Welcome, thank you for downloading episode 223 of Suplex City Limits for July 20th, 2019. Puff Puff Pass, it's your boy, the King of Bong style, Jim Vicious, and he is the original Canadian Destroyer, my co-host. I, I did it so horribly last time, I'm not even going to try this time. I'm just Tyler Fudge. There you go. Suplex City Limits, available for listening or fine podcasts are found. You can follow me at the show Twitter at Suplex City Limit. Follow Tyler at the Federation. If you like the show, consider supporting us by picking up a t-shirt at Pro Wrestling Tees. You can also donate on our Patreon, become a producer, like bad motherfuckers. You should see the size of his organ field, Caleb Morgan field. He's not balding, Christopher Spaulding. See money. Playing Vanilla Martin Corns, our buddies at the Smack It Down podcast. Check them out everywhere podcasts are found. They cover a lot of shit we don't with cool Australian accents, mate. <laughs> nice. Deshaun, not as racist as Terry Balea, infamous Chris Savage, kick ass Keith Martin, the Rice of Roni, Jabroni, Tyloni, and Sani and Jax, and Jumpin' Jeremy Fultz. Whew. Over on the <laughs> over on the PayPal side, Suplex City Limits at Gmail. You can also donate there if Patreon's not your bag. Uh, like motherfucking Big Body Sam, Aaron Echoes, 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 <laughs> Echo, and deep in your snatch, it's Cody fucking Hash. So. This week on the show, we will be laughing at some marks in Mark Tank. We've got the top three. We've got a bunch of news. We're talking to talking tons of Japan. Yes. I mean, it's all Japan. Like, I think the, the closing song already needs to be, I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. I, I was going to keep the <laughs> shit going uh, that I've been doing with uh, plugging, you know, friends bands. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I mean, we'll do that. Hey, I already had one planned. That's I get it. <laughs> you know, there's less chances of getting dinged with a copyright. We're definitely not going to get dinged. <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, we got all that and a whole lot more. Someone posed the question to me on Twitter this week: um, How do you do a wrestling podcast and not cover the most popular product? This is how, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, like come on. Have Just you respond. not listened? Just respond with a link to the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, here you go. Glad we gave up on that ghost because a lot of people haven't, you know. Oh yeah, no. It, like, will will I watch the the anniversary raw next week? I well, might yeah. watch bits and pieces of it for sure. You know, like I, I definitely have plans to see that. Um, but then I'm done again. Till yeah. you know, yeah. like let's see when Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff, you know, see what they do, and if it if it seems cool, I might come back. If not, no. I drug us into this conversation way too early. <laughs> I actually did skim Raw and SmackDown, and I guess we can talk about it maybe later. But first, I've seen I've seen one piece. There you go. But first, as always, started off with the top three after a word from our sponsors. Hulkamania is bringing Celebrity Championship Wrestling to CMG. Till now, I gotta get Danny Bonaduce, Dennis Rodman, <laughs> Dustin Diamond, <laughs> Tiffany, Butterbean. Aaron Murphy, Frank Stallone, Nikki Siri, Todd Bridges, and Trishel Canatel, Polka 5. 
CMT presents Hulk Hogan Celebrity Championship Wrestling. Available on CMT On Demand. Only on CMT, brother. Two Plex City Limits. Time. Three. Suplex City Women's Top 3, our top three matches of the week. You know, that Hulk Hogan celebrity wrestling, Yeah, it would have been something if they got, like, real celebrities or <laughs> athletic yes. people. Like, are you fucking Danny Bonaduce? He was the best one, actually. Danny. I know. That's the crazy thing about it. Danny Bonaduce, he was the star of that show. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, having Trishel from the real world, you know, like, really? Yeah. Like yeah, that's that's the epitome of anti celebrity right there. Screech, Screech, Todd Bridges. Todd Bridges yeah. more than Screech, if you ask me, because like he was second fiddle to fucking Gary Coleman when Screech was saved by the bell to me. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't suggest watching that so, but uh, I do suggest uh, Brian Zane's wrestling yes. with regret video on it. It'll give you all you need to know in a small, you know, you'll save yourself the time. Anyway. Yes. Why don't you take us through this week's top three? Well, let's see. Let's start with the, the furthest away from where we are today. Oh, buddy, I'm such a poet. Well, uh, let's end with the best one. Exa one well, exactly. Definitely the best. Exactly, 100%. But Kenta taking on Tanahashi on night three of the G1, I thought was a really good showing for Kenta. And, and the way that they, they played the, the match out and at the end having Tanahashi not shake Kenta's hand it was was a, a really nice nod that you know this is going to go forward and maybe there's going to be a good story told here because you got Kenta who was the man in Noah and Tanahashi who was the man in New Japan you know it, it's a story that tells itself so mm. yeah really good shit loving Kenta in the G1 yeah yeah his promo that he cut after that match against Tanahashi too and just like <laughs> Hopefully some of you guys remember me. <laughs> One guy starts walking out. He's like, that guy, he doesn't remember me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Get this fucking great this year. But good match? Yeah, it was. Uh, our second match on the top three would be Will Ospreay taking on Kota Ibushi. And mm. really, you got two guys coming into this match. Both are hurt. One significantly more than the other. Uh, Kota Ibushi having a sprained ankle and Will Ospreay having stingers at 28 years old. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, man, there's no worse opponent to have with it when your neck is fucking with you than Ibushi because yeah. he hates necks as much as he hates vaginas. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. And, and it, it's you got on the other end of the spectrum, number two on that list, I'd say it would be Naito, and he hates necks just as much as he hates that IC title. So. Yeah, he does. He hates necks too. This match was fucking crazy, man. It was. It, Will Ospreay got dropped on his head a couple times. One on like a, one of those reverse tombstone motherfuckers. Yeah. Just straight on the fucking top of the skull. Couple. Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go for it. That's it. Oh, I just just clarify once again that I don't care when people when wrestlers decide they want to do this. They know that we all say they shouldn't do that. And they know the consequences. And if they want to fucking drop themselves on their heads for their fucking art, then I guess go for it. You know, I'm I'm not one to uh, to to judge. You know, I think a lot of people spend a lot of time complaining about spots that people do. Well, they we, know, and that's the know. thing. As kids, you know what I mean. What did you want? You wanted crazier, 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 crazier. You know, so like, it, 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 if people come to and see that, like, if it draws eyes. They're gonna keep on doing it. The only way, like, if you want, if you want it to go away, just like not watch it. How do you do that? Like, come on. I assure you, Will Osprey is well versed in what happened to the Dynamite Kid. Yes. Yes. You know, he knows. Hundred so. percent. You want to keep doing it, then fuck you. I guess that's your yeah. deal. But but hey, he slowed Great down. Great match. Hundred <laughs> percent. It was fantastic. I got like it was. It's 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 hard to watch at points. You know what I mean? It's like because you don't want to watch somebody die in the ring, like. You know, we've all, well, maybe we all haven't, but I've seen, like, the Misawa match, and, like, that, it's mm. not fun, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. But, uh, no, the match was fantastic. They're, they, It's Ibushi and Osprey. They they had a lot of callbacks from the Wrestle Kingdom match a couple months ago, uh, where, like, 
uh, Osprey was was stood up in the tree of woe instead of Ibushi, and he's toying with him. I thought that whole exchange was fantastic. Um, yeah. And then the story about Osprey's neck was cool too, just to put it into the storyline. For sure. And then <laughs> we have the, the match. match. Of the week, the yeah. match of the G1, and I'm going to say match of the year contender. Honestly, I fucking love this match. Hey, we'll we'll see how it holds up with everything else before the year ends, but, I mean, it's up there. Because for me, it's what I like in wrestling. It's not the, you know, a lot of times there's like, oh, this is the best match. And it's like, you know, Okada Omega fucking wrestling for five hours or something. <laughs> it's like, eh, that's not really... To me, what's great? This is the shit. Brawling all like all over the place. A lot of fucking highest spots. Back in the ring, good shit. I don't know how long this match was. Do you? Fifteen minutes, maybe? Uh, no, it was in. The, it was past twenty minutes. Well, then they did it fucking right because I wasn't bored at all. No, it was. It was a really good match. Versus Hangman Page, and uh, <laughs> Kip Sabian. fucking Kip Sabian was a nineteen-minute match that I like. Fucking, I felt like went forever. So. Yep. Yep. No, a hundred percent, dude. We got some good reviews on our Fight for the Fallen reviews. We did. We did some, uh, I mean, come on. I mean, the, yeah. the, the cream rises, and the truth is told at some point in time, right? <laughs> so, if you don't know, now you know. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say yeah. about that, but thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this match was fucking awesome. I love that. And now, match of the year contender, I will say. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's probably a stretch, but. Hey, you know what, though? It, you're not the only person saying that this, this was a fantastic match. You know, so um, in comparison, there are some, some hefty ones to live up to. At least, in my opinion, I, I do believe that uh, uh, Omega and Tanahashi was fantastic at the G1. I loved that match. Um, and then, as well as Cody and Dustin, the story told in that match is going to be, that's a contender for match of the year as well. But this match... It was but so all the much contenders fun. really this year. Well, that well, that's what I'm saying. The like Cody and Dustin, uh, yeah. uh, Omega Tanahashi. Um, that, from that, from Wrestle Kingdom, me. yeah, yeah, from Wrestle Kingdom. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's not a whole lot really that's jumping out to mind, but those two are are, are up there. There's nothing from WrestleMania. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sure there's um, Dragon Lee. Who was it? Osprey and and Ibushi from Wrestle Kingdom was great. Uh, mm. For forgetting any, hit us up. Let us. Yeah, know. yeah. We need to start doing like like a half year contenders and narrow that down so we're ready for the end of the year awards. Well, when we did the end of the year awards last year, like, oh, this year I'm going to keep a list of all of my shit. <laughs> yeah. So at the end, I'm not fucked trying to remember what matches happened. Well, too bad. Too too bad. I think you should do a poll on on because you got the more Twitter followers. You should do a poll and say how much, you know, who, what is your nominations for a match of the year so far? I wish you could do it in the group, too. We could. The group, you'll get a lot better answers, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he just fucking burned out a bunch of people. <laughs> he just fucking burned them. Well, I mean, no, like, I don't mean it like that. I mean that, like, the group yeah. is closed. There'll the... be less people being cocks. And yeah, exactly. Like... And just, like, somebody coming in with Brock Lesnar and fucking Rollins. It's like, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, dude, I love... Umino being like Moxley's mm. personal fucking young boy. Yeah. And then having Moxley's ref being uh, Red Shoes. Yeah. So, like, that's his father. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, like, did you see how he walked by and he just gave Red Shoes a big hug? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking great, man. <laughs> um, I f love the way it's from the go. This match was great. Ishii comes out, just goes right in there, and just, like, head-to-head -head oh, fucking... Yeah posturing and shit like holy shit like it just started and already this is more interesting than 90 percent of the wrestling matches you watch every week yeah no 100 fucking awesome man well i mean because you've got a guy that you've if you haven't seen moxley before wwe you hear these myths of how he was crazy and all this shit and then it's going up against you know the equivalent of crazy in new japan which is ishii and i was gonna wait until after this match but dude honestly the guy is the hottest thing in pro wrestling right now yeah no i agree 100 percent. there's there's something to be said on whether or not you 
elevate him past Omega for AEW right now. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, you like, do. Yes, you fucking do. <laughs> so, like, if you took Omega and do, you know, because, like, not a lot of people in America know in the vast majority who Omega is and what he's all about. Sure, his matches are great, um, but, like, if you did a little bit of a slow burn with Omega and have him come back around maybe and, and a rubber match with Moxley before the title after Moxley beats Jericho or something. You know what I mean? I, just, I know that it's going to be a problem because, you know, to start a new wrestling company and their first thing is, like, two WWE guys, Jericho and Moxley. I get that. I wouldn't want to do it either, but in this t- situation, I don't know. I don't know that you don't just have Paige beat fucking Jericho. I understand that, you know, obviously you want Jericho to be your first champion, to come out on TV with it and shit, but... I don't know. See, I I, mean, I, I feel to. you should have a heel start uh, because yeah. it's always better for a chase than because like I feel like then you're just gonna you, you'll set Adam Page back. I feel if he won that title, and then he's just no adversity whatsoever is just taken on the rogues gallery. When I think he would be better suited if he chased that title. Well, yeah, it's gonna be Jericho. I mean, you know, yeah. but. Who's Jericho's first opponent? It's going to be probably Omega. The winner of Moxley and Omega, I'd right, say. Oh, nice. I assume Omega. Uh, yeah, I. We'll see. <laughs> for me, for me, like we've talked about on here lately, the guy's just super cold. Like I don't, mm-hmm. I get nothing on. It's like yeah, great yeah. matches, but he just walks out and he's just like a dude. But his opponents haven't been. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They, they're not sure he had that match against Jericho at Double or Nothing, but. At the same time, you're kind of limited with Jericho. Jericho's more of an act now. He, he's he's not that in ring prowess that it's not there as much anymore. So like he relies on little things, and sometimes he relies on those little things too much, like the camera work and and that bullshit that he does in every match. I think that should be spared for for certain times. But um, yeah, <laughs> he hasn't really been given. Those those workers that are elevated and are looked at with prestige and can work. You got SEMA who can work, but, I mean, Jim Cornette said it best. Like, SEMA's not going anywhere in America. No. Nowhere. He, he, it's You can push them all you want. It's not going to happen. But Yeah. With this match... Um, they do the posturing. They start just throwing forearms at each other, and the crowd just yelling with everyone. Hi, hi, hi. It's back and forth, like fucking awesome. Yeah, Roll into the yeah. crowd. They're up on the fucking out in the seats and shit. It was awesome. One thing too, Kevin Kelly, who is my announcer of the oh, year last. Wait, no, wait, no. Hold on, hold on. I just gotta tell you, this is the best call from Kevin Kelly's Death Rider. <laughs> <laughs> he uh. He fucking just is so good. He explained at one point explains well, Red Shoes is not throwing this match out because the the crowd would be pissed at him. Yeah. And these guys would be pissed at him. And it's like just little things of like in case you're wondering why this isn't a DQ here, you know? Yeah. And they also explained that John Moxley asked, asked it to be a street fight. You also, know what I mean? So New Japan you can use weapons outside the ring. That's the deal, yeah? I mean, that always uh, seems to be the deal. I think that, like, in, in big, high-profile matches, they let it go a little bit. If it were a nothing match and somebody used a chair, it probably would get thrown out. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I don't, it, it's, it's, it's vague, but usually if they're outside, they get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this was fucking... Really good. How about Ishii off the top to the oh, outside through a table? Holy my shit! God, he, he flies, man. <laughs> like he 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 flies, but he drops <clears throat> so yeah. fast. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he he jumps, he gets that elevation, but as soon as he's ready to fall, he literally just goes down. Yeah, <laughs> but like he it looked like he hit Moxley with a ton of bricks, but it was fantastic. Uh, they broke what that did... fucking Japanese table for sure. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the like safe headbutts thing that they're doing? They're doing like low, lower speed headbutts. I yeah. thought it was awesome. Yeah. Like you know they're they're safe. They're they still look fucking pretty cool. Yeah. I mean you can if you shot them from a further away angle, I think they look better instead of coming in from a close up and just like actually seeing how soft they're doing it. 
But yeah. Um, yeah, if you shot it from behind, you know what I mean, and you could see she's back of his head, and then you see Moxley come forward, you know, you, with Moxley's size, it just looks so intimidating, you know. So it would just look a lot better. But yeah, I like those headbutts. You see, he kicks out of the first finish. What is the Death Rider? Yeah. It was yeah, death just rider. A, a snap Death Rider. <laughs> it's a replacement for Jadrilla. <laughs> yeah, fucking awesome though. Eventually gets him with a uh, an extra fucking intense one. Yes, gets the win, which um, is what he's yeah. calling the paradigm shift in AEW is the elevated mm-hmm. Death Rider. Yeah, Death Rider. <laughs> that's going to be a thing now. <laughs> yeah, I got to get that isolated next time I hear Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. You know what, I'll watch, a, I'll watch Moxley and Ishii again. Fuck it. <laughs> you know, while I was watching this, I was like, I think it might be time to put Ishii into the uh, most prestigious Hall of Fame in all of fucking podcasting. <sighs> Man. He... Debuted in 96. He can be there. You know what I mean? Like he's, if he's not here now, he's going to be there. You know, he's going to be right. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, right. So, like, I mean, he's he's definitely approaching the twilight of his career. I'd imagine over in Japan, you never know because I mean, yeah, the only New Japan kind of pretty old. I think the only current roster New Japan guys in the Hall of Fame Liger. are oh, oh, Liger, Okada, Tanahashi, Suzuki. Yeah, I mean, Ibushi. Or, or Ishii can easily go in there. There are people saying that I put Okada in too early. No, man. I don't think so. Okada fucking quit wrestling tomorrow. He would be he in would the absolutely. Hall of Fame. Exactly. Yeah. So, no. He's had, a, so yeah. he's had a good enough career. Even if you don't uh, even if you don't New Japan, you should really check out Moxley versus Ishii, especially if yeah. you're like, uh, don't really watch shit other than W. I don't know why it's a new one. But anyway, if you don't see a lot of shit or if you haven't seen a lot of Moxley at post WWE, this is the best Moxley. Yeah. yeah. This is better than Joey Janela and Moxley. This oh, is dude, well, this is the best thing he's done since he's been back. Yeah. And dude, like I said, I so much props to that guy. He could be off doing six man tags on house shows, getting paid millions of dollars. Millions, yeah. Bucking his wife every night. But he's not, dude. He, he took the he said fuck it, and he's doing what he wants to do. He's in Japan having crazy as fuck matches, getting yeah. thrown into tax and shit at AEW. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, it's not like he just went back out and it was like, meh. I mean, he's went out and he, it's, all his shit is fucking great. Like I, I, I give that dude tons of yeah. props. He went from a dude that nobody gave a fuck about to like the hottest thing in wrestling this year. It's it, it's it's crazy how fast it can happen. Like you look at it, it happened with Cody Rhodes. You know what I mean? He came out and on the indies, he just ah, blew it up. Not this fast, no, no, because he doesn't work the same. He, he doesn't work a, a match like Moxley. He's not as or good to as this a wrestler. level. No, Cody no, but was a little odd on the indies when he came out. Moxley. Well, yeah, no, but he was everywhere. Though I'm not talking like exactly like like as soon as he came out, but once he got the new Japan, everything started. You know what I mean? It didn't come so fast. It didn't go so you know uh, so fulfilling. But like, it's just a, like an example. Like he was, he came out. You know, he started this the show. Everybody in WWE, you can come out and you can do it. Like I'm not saying he's like a pioneer or anything like that. But like, <laughs> he was the first guy to leave WWE, and and really shows like, hey, you know, it's possible to leave, and it there's it's, there's money to be made, and Moxley. Yeah. Moxley obviously was one of the main guys to capitalize on that. Your current standings for the G1. Uh, there was a show this morning we're not covering. It's not in our top three this week. We haven't watched it yet. No. It's uh, 10.46 a.m. local time. Here. 9.46 a.m. local time here. Yeah, right. So uh, I didn't even eat breakfast before this. I breakfast. Ate a bu- <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> breakfast. I, <laughs> I ate a Nature Valley peanut butter bar anyway your current g1 standings are as follows block a kenta with eight okada with eight so that's crazy both yeah. undefeated thus far yeah and there's and are going to face off they got five matches left i believe uh yeah so they're at eight lance archer four evil is at four tanahashi four abushi four and then Osprey, Sonata, Fale, and Saber, all with two. Yes. In the B block, you got Moxley with six, 
Ishii, Robinson, Takagi, and Yano with four. <laughs> Yano's got four. Yeah. Fuck? Yeah, Yano's beat two people, which he's yeah. not going to win anymore, though. You know what I mean? Probably not. Then you've got Goto, Taichi, Cobb, and Naito with two, and Jay White with zero. Yes. Who's Jay White three. beat from uh, uh, oh, Toriano? The former IWGP heavyweight champion starts G one zero and three. Yeah, I don't know what the story is, but I'm fucking interested. <laughs> it's the second like, that Jay White's not really that good, right? <laughs> she just wins I, by bullshit. <laughs> I honestly think that he goes from here and just goes on a winning streak. I really do. I can't mm-hmm. see, in this block. I can't see Jay White not being in the mix. I feel. You know what I mean? Because, like, Shingo Takagi is going to level out soon enough. Yeah. He's not going to go too far. They're giving him some, some wins now. I don't think he's going to lose like Toriano will in the, the rest of the tournament. But I expect Shingo to come out with maybe six or eight points. Um, yeah. But Jay White can easily make his way back up now and get, if he wins every match, he gets, like, 12 points. Yeah. So Who is possible. uh What's coming up in the next show, man? Like, who's next for Moxley? Uh, well, next for Moxley, I think that would be this show. Let's see here. Yes, so next for Moxley is Shingo Takagi. <laughs> oh, dude, Moxley Takagi? <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> so that match is going to be great. I mean, um, you know it's coming, obviously, because everybody's going to take on everybody, but yeah. when it gets there, you're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be tits. Yeah, because this is Wednesday. Uh, you also got Juice Robinson taking on Toriano. I'm assuming Juice wins. Hiroyoku Goto taking on Taichi. I imagine Goto wins. Moxley and Takagi. I'm going out and saying Moxley wins this match. And then you got Jeff Cobb taking on Jay White. What's Jeff Cobb standing at with points now? Uh, Cobb only has two points. Two points? So I'd imagine, yeah, I imagine Jay White's going to going to pick up the win here because Cobb being an ROH guy is not going to get pushed to the moon and then the main event though of that night is, is going to be a great match it's going to be Ishii and Naito so can't go wrong there no no this I, is what I Wednesday the 24th Wednesday. uh yep yeah, yeah Wednesday the 24th I'm going to see Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie on Wednesday the 24th are you really yeah you know, like five minutes away holy shit and that's pretty dope, though. That is should be all right. I'll talk. I'll talk about it next week. Yeah, recap it. Recap, uh, and also the Saturday show, the one that's going to be on the Access, is main evented with Okada and Kenta. So on the Access, yeah, on the Access, Okada yeah. and Kenta. That's awesome too. Yeah, and then there's uh, Tanahashi and Sonata, Evil, Zack Saber Jr., Osprey, and Bad Luck Fale, and Kota Bushi and Lance Archer. So it's a very missable match, really. Or uh, it's a passable show. There's not a lot of great prospects on it. Evil and Zach, I'm sure, is going to be okay. Tanahashi and Sonata should be fun. But Okada and Kenta is going to be fucking a blast. Not a big evil guy. No? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of evil. Uh, I, I find you pair evil up with uh, certain people, it's going to be really good. Um, like Evil and Sonata, which was not in our top three, it's an honorary mention, though, if you ask me. Because uh, yeah. of the story that was told between the two tag team partners and how they've been having a little bit of rift since they lost the titles. But after this match, you know, they did the whole Los Ingrid fist bump, and they're all good, and they go on after Evil had beaten Sonata, who mm-hmm. was the one that got all the, ti- the singles title shots, not Evil. So it's kind of cementing that Evil is right now the better singles competitor of the two, so maybe he should get the, the accolation more. You know what I mean? Mm. So it, it's... Fucking stories. <laughs> exactly. Stories. Fucking logical, oh. good stories. I mean, like like the these... stories of a fucking ninja movie or something. Yeah, like these are stories told through through motion <laughs> and 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 physical movement. It's not it's not even just being you know outright told. You could tell just by the way what they're doing, what the story is. So there you go. So, yeah, G1 is the shit. You should be watching it. Oh. So, moving on from there. <laughs> uh, but if you don't, we'll, you know, we'll continue to tell you about it. Well, I mean, yes. We will let you know what is the best. Yeah. All right. Um, also, 
Yeah, shout outs to, uh, I guess, honorable mentions to. I watched Kushida versus Apollo Crews from NXT. Mm. Fucking pretty good TV match. Pretty yeah. Good. So what are they doing on NXT right now? I've fallen off on it a little bit with this G1. Uh, I did not even take notes. They're continuing with Cole and Gargano. Okay, They're yeah. going to be on the next takeover. Yeah, because they got a three stages of hell match at the takeover or something like that. I guess. Um, I'm over that fucking feud, too. <laughs> um, I don't really remember what else they were sent out. They had the match, um, the, you know, the two guys from the breakout tournament or whatever the fuck it is, the get-on-TV tournament, <laughs> and they were both, like, dudes that didn't, didn't interest me. Um, oh, yeah. This one dude, Dexter something or another. Oh, he was that's, a, uh, that's uh, Samuel Shaw from TNA, the stalker. Yeah, he comes out to this, like, Stranger Things type music, and he's just got, like, crazy eyes. Yeah. And he just stares at the camera, and it's fucking, it's, I mean, it's weird. I mean, I it, he looks fucking kind of frightening, I guess. But Yeah, he's got he's got a, a menacing look to him. Um, I don't yeah. know what his work is like these days. I wasn't too big of a fan of him in Impact, but... I mean, it's it's impact. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, not much. Sane, not Sane. Shirai. Oh, looking hot as hell with that latex. Oh, eh? dude. Oh. Yeah, but she's a heel, and I don't get it. She so comes out and says, like, I don't like you. You're like, okay. <laughs> I still don't like, I still don't dislike you. you know? <laughs> still hot. Yeah, like, still I got a nice shitter. I, I, I tweeted that uh, during that AEW show that there's no better baby face in peril than a cute Asian woman. Oh, and I expected true. blowback. I was like, oh, some fucker is going to like. But no, no, no one did. No, no. See, that's Und, the under thing. the radar. That's the, uh, I, I feel like uh, with when you're talking about female wrestling. If it's any kind of compliment, you'll get you'll you'll be okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Or well, I, I got something this week. If you said if you said something different, like if you said white broads can't sell for shit, <laughs> yeah. people would have been up in arms. <laughs> I, I think I criticized some woman this week and got like a mini fucking. Like a oh, mini you mean Alexa storm. Bliss? Probably. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. She's in my Mark Tank later. But yeah, not anyway. surprised. I bet you Coley Collier's in it because I seen a good comment from him. Oh, I didn't. If you got oh, it, man, um, put it in there. I'll, uh, I'll, Later I'll look on. for it. I'll look for it. How about that? You Let's can't see. do anything on his feed because he's just retweets everything. He just like retweets shit in every minute of the day. Oh, I know. It's so hard. So like, I don't know if I'm going to find it. Why is? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I go on Twitter and it's like. Rest in peace, Chester Bennington's trending in Canada. I was like, why? <laughs> He's been dead for years. <laughs> a but year? Two years? Also, two years, yeah. Well, there you go. So, enough of that shit. Let's get into this week's news. This week in the news, one less podcast in our way. And CM Punk at Starcast. <laughs> Let the rumors fly, everybody. Over to you, Tim. I'm Jim Vicious, and this is news to us. One less podcast standing in our way of auditory <laughs> podcasting domination. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what the fuck else were you talking about? Oh, no, CM Punk at Starcast. Mm. So what about something before that? I don't know. I'm fucking baked. Oh no! I uh, there was there was there was two stories. Saturday wake and bake special. Yeah, buddy. I can't find. I don't follow Cody Collier on on yeah, Twitter. Fuck him. Well, I would you. I don't even. I don't even know how to find him. Honestly, I just stumble yeah. across him every now and then. You know. Yeah. CM Punk will be appearing at Starcast Three. Um, mm -hmm. Feel free to begin. You know, debating yeah, whether or not he's going to show up on the <laughs> yeah. show. Because you know it's going to be a talk, and rightfully so, people are going to talk about it because it's the closest he's been to an AEW show. If there's a way to say fuck you to Vince, this would be the he way at, to do it. He was at StarCast before, though. Was, was he? he? Like, I don't think pretty so. sure he was. But maybe. Mm, I don't know. thought he was, like, the um, last time in Chicago. Sure he was. I don't know. They, would they have made such a big deal about this one if he was? Probably. I don't know. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he was, even if he wasn't. Whatever. Um, I, if the, if he's ever coming back, now's the time. There's yeah. no better time and place and everything than right now. 
you know, and even if they would have had Punk, like when this first started, I wouldn't have done it until right before TV either. You know, like yeah. going into TV, this pay per view is like a couple weeks before that might be the way to go. Yeah, no, I I agree. <laughs> it, it, I, I never used to get pissed, to but at this point, I am like, fuck you, man. <laughs> you know, if you really hate the WWE, then do something about it. You know. No, no, a hundred percent, hundred percent. This is this would be the time to do it, and if you're not going to do it now, then there's you know, there's no point in doing it. If you ask me. So I don't think it'll happen, but I hope it happens. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. No, I I hundred percent agree. And hey, for me, I'm going to be at that show, so I would really like for it to happen. It would be fun to watch live. Oh shit! Right. Right. So, whatever. You're gonna fucking uh, meet some some SCL Nation out there if if they're around if they're around. Lance Levine will be there. Well, fuck, I'll fucking I'll scope. I know what you look like, Lance. You might not know what I look like, but if something comes by, who's that other motherfucker? Do uh, Jay Dune? I think he lives in Chicago. Does he live in Chicago? I thought he lived in like Vegas or something or like California. But maybe he lives in I Chicago. I don't know. I never see snow in his Twitter, so I assume that he doesn't live in Chicago. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Uh, other stories. Chris Charlton is back. Yes. He was briefly pushed back to just the translator because he does have a terrible voice. I mean, I admit yeah. that. I, I agree, but fuck is he ever insightful. He adds a lot to the commentary. He really does. Fans complained, and he's back to doing commentary. What a novel idea. Right? Because it wasn't New Japan that made that decision. It was TV Asai that made that. They didn't want Chris Tr which makes no sense to me because TV Asai is the Japanese version. Why is the Japanese people, you know what I mean, that like that are in charge of the Japanese television deciding who does the English translations for the English feed on New Japan World? What? Mm. Why? Yeah. Why does that matter if, if the... If, if, the fans enjoy it, then it shouldn't mean a roll of beans. What? Because the Japanese people aren't going to see it. I know you love the roll of beans, don't you? I do. I fucking do. <laughs> Should be a t-shirt. <laughs> Suplex City Limits, roll of beans. Yeah, yeah I bet we'll sell fucking tons of those. <laughs> a roll of beans t-shirt. Get your roll of beans t-shirt now. <laughs> Send in your money order with a self-addressed stamped envelope. Yeah. yeah. Send us your money. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. What else we got? Dragon Gate, their Kobe show, which is on the 21st, and is on their streaming platform because, of course, they have a streaming platform too. Yes. They have English commentary. What? Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Former Evolve manager and busted open radio host Larry Dallas and MLW's Rich Bikini. <laughs> Rich what? Zucchini. What? Yeah, they will, That's good. They'll be they'll be calling the show live from Japan. Why Rich Bikini? Oh wait, MLW, right? Yeah. I was thinking fucking uh, um, ROH. What's his name? Ian Riccoboni. <laughs> yeah. See Rick Rich. Ian <laughs> Ian Ravioli and <laughs> and R Rich Zucchini. <laughs> you know, Rich does look like the type of guy that eats a lot of zucchinis. Rich fettuccine. <laughs> that works because fettuccine is really rich. You could do all of them, dude. You could do linguine, you could do ravioli. <laughs> all right, <laughs> just a little pasta here before you guys, you know, <laughs> pasta mania. So I fucking read the research, the data, and it shows that there's a large gap in the pasta comedy region. <laughs> And expand our brand. Uh, <laughs> the show will be headlined by Open the Dreamgate champion Pac taking on Ben K. I ben K. Is like, what's that happens when you're in elementary school and there was two, <laughs> two, two Bens? Yeah. yeah. One's Ben M and one's Ben yeah. K. Exactly. Exactly. As long as he's not fucking Ben Gay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say Ben K is pretty close to Ben Gay. That's an ointment joke. It is. It uh, is. It's an old man smelly ointment joke. Fucking stupid. Uh, I don't know what you're smoking today, but it makes you, it makes you stupid. What is this? I, uh, uh, Cherry AK. Oh, I love AK-47. I've had AK-47. It's fantastic. Um, I'm smoking uh, Monster Cookies. 
It's my- Monster OG crossed with space cookies. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I've had both of those separate. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, here we funny. are. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, look out for that. I am actually hope that we can watch. I, mean, I don't want to have to subscribe, but maybe we can catch that show and at least the main event and see who this fucking Ben K kid is. Oh, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to check some of it out. Uh, you know, I mean, you got Pac. Pac's fantastic. So, um, a former WWE superstar, the Berserker, he was sentenced <laughs> after his seventh DUI arrest to John Nord. He's he's been he's had sixteen felonies or something in the last ten years or something or whatever. Yeah. He, he lives in assisted living. And he's 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 been told that he's not allowed to drive. He's been on probation for five years and told that he cannot drive anymore. If he drives, he's going to jail. He's been arrested for seven DUIs in the past few years, and court records stated there were 16 incidents <laughs> where authorities charged Nord with either a felony or misdemeanor See? over the past 10 years. <laughs> Buddy, that was just off the top of my head. Because I listened to Jim Cornette talk about it on the his Fight for the Fallen episode. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, what in the fuck, man? So, I don't know. He's not allowed to drive anymore. No, no. So, I mean, my love for you is like Berserker. <laughs> do you want exactly. to make him fuck Berserker? I fucking love that. You, you would do that ripped off um, Brody Huss. Remember that? Yes. Don't do the Brody Huss. No. No. But hey, fuck you, Jim Nord. <laughs> he lives in Minnesota, too, which is great. Oh, I should yeah. go visit him. I should go visit him. <laughs> you, pr- you can probably uh, like make him think. Like He's got ALS, too, doesn't he? I don't know. Whatever ALS is, I'm not 100% sure. I just know that like a bunch of people threw ice water over themselves for it. So Instead of donating money. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand that. I was like, oh, donate money to this charity or dump ice on your head. And everyone's like, well, I got to do a video of me dumping ice on my head. <laughs> the point is that you donate money, you fucking nimwit. <laughs> Fuck. Anyway. Uh, you see this dude? He's seven foot three, Jordan Amog I don't know, fucking know. Mm-mm. He makes his fucking. <laughs> Makes his in ring debut at an NXT live event. Seven foot three, this fucking guy. He's huge, dude. I'm sure he's. Is he? Is he like filled out or is he linky? Nah, he's pretty filled out, okay. man. Okay, I can get behind that. Then there's nothing worse than a giant Gonzalez looking motherfucker. <sighs> no, dude. <laughs> what the hell is his name? Um. Um. Uh, oh. Uh. Yeah. No, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, Jorge, Jorge, something. It's gone forever. I'll he's known know. as he's known as El Gicante. El Gicante. That's, yes, that's yeah, that's the name I was looking for. I don't know oh, his El, real name. Yeah, we call him El Gicante when we run across him and fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Which has happened an unfortunate amount of times. Yeah. Yeah, I just sent you a thing, a picture of the dude. I mean, he's pretty fucking filled out. He sent it through. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Let's see here. He's Where cool. are you? Oh wow! Okay, yeah, he's seven he's, three. So. He's got a Barry Baron Corbin belly, but yeah, he's maybe you can uh, get 20, away with it when you're that size. He's twenty five years old. He's from Nigeria. Ooh, maybe Jim. Jim but, Vince has to get the great power Udi out of jail. <laughs> and the great power Udi be his fucking mouthpiece. Fuck you. Is Udi's in jail? Yeah, he tried to kill his wife, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, did that happen? Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't I know. Like, I mean, like, he's probably not in jail. I mean, uh, great power Udi jail. <laughs> <laughs> great uh, power Udi fucking Congo wrestling world champion. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Nothing's really coming up because, I mean, it's probably just Congo. So, I thought we did say something, have a story about him beating his life once. I think so. Like, if he's not in jail, I mean, he was looked at for going to jail. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, Tully Blanchard agrees to a multi-show deal with AEW. He's like, he's the exclusive advisor to Sean Spears. That's familiar. I don't know. 
<laughs> you mean like uh, he, he's kind of like a Paul Heyman? He's an advocate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anything that gets Tully on TV is fine by me. I'd like to see, because, I mean, we all look at what Tully did back in the day. He was fantastic. Um, he was so quick-witted. Uh, he, he he was a great talker. Uh, hopefully, with old age, it hasn't really ruined him. But I think that he can do some talking. It's not like Sean Spears needs somebody to talk for him. But, I mean, it helps when Tully Blanchard's on your side. I don't know. I don't get it. Don't no? Get it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I think it's fun. <laughs> I think it's a misstep, dude. He can do, he can do his own promos. He's fucking, he's fine. What is having this old man with him for? And like, totally, and I, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. I like totally too, Suplex City Limits Hall of Famer, but I don't get it. Anyhow, there's that. <clears throat> Braun Strowman signs a new deal. Mm, fun. <laughs> because good what luck else you with those do? knees. Yeah. Well, they don't help him out any with that shit. Mm -mm. No, he just fucking runs and runs and runs and runs when he can, when he looks like he's laboring walking. Yeah, they're putting a lot of unnecessary wear on that dude's fucking knees. Uh, so yeah, yeah I love that. It's like just a non-story. We're just like, Meh. yeah. I mean, it's 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 Braun Strowman. It, it's nothing. It's not like he was ever going to be picked up by AEW, right? Or anywhere. <laughs> I don't know why you feel like you gotta lock him up somewhere, but he's whatever. New Japan might pay you for fucking one. <laughs> yeah, come in and just see what you can't do, and just like, okay, never mind, bye. <laughs> um, Phil Balor requests time off. He'll be gone for yep. two months. Like, fucking matters. Like, is that dude really on the shows anymore? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna do a little program with Bray Wyatt, I assume, till SummerSlam, then he's gone. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is. Um, I would want to take time off too. Yeah, I mean, whether I don't know if it's for, bot like it to to heal up or if it's just frustrations or not. Like that, I don't think that's been reported. But he, he's got a rumor is he's got a really big Lego set he wants to dedicate to. <laughs> he wants to yep, make the whole set of the Pirates of Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then he's gonna fuck Kathy Kelly next to it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Probably. Is that who he's banging? Yeah. She's fucking hot, too. She is. I always thought he was uh, into the dudes. But... Homosexual? <laughs> Homosexual! <laughs> you gotta put a southern accent on there so everybody knows that it's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking joke. <laughs> like, oh, they're joking. Okay. Yeah. They're mocking the <laughs> Yeah, Which no. we don't do nearly as much as we used to. Like it used to just be a shtick on here, like to talk shit on there. And then I'd look at our numbers and I'm like, wow, nobody listens to this show with this song. <laughs> I just think they probably think we both have fucking dumb accents. <laughs> you saying you saying we're not big in the South? I don't think we are. No. Well, I mean, hey, that was probably my bad. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> um Let's see what else we got. AEW signs MJF to a new multi-year deal. Yeah, I mean that's that's smart because MJF is a he's a star in the making, man. There's if there's one highlight you can find that's glaring from AEW is that he needs to be protected a hundred percent and made a goddamn star. Yeah. Yeah, what is he, 22 years old, 23 years old? Yeah, like that little bit on, uh, the, you see that video of where he got invited back to StarCast? And when Cody leaves, he talks shit to Conrad. Listen here, Mr. Titties, or you know, fatty. But, listen here, turkey tits. Yes, turkey tits. Uh, dude, that was so fantastic. It, I love it. Like, I want MJF to call me turkey tits. I really would. Yeah, really good shit. Um, he's still under contract with MLW, so... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's one of those things. Where it's going to come to an end once TV comes, I assume. Yeah. But. It is smart of MLW to work with these guys. These guys are going to come to you and like, hey, work together. Like, mm -hmm. We'll see where that pays off for MLW. When is that going to pay off for MLW? Well, I mean, we'll see what happens when TV comes on. Like, you know, you can have, let's say, like if Brian Pillman Jr., I don't know what his contract or if he has a contract per se with MLW. Because I do know... A lot of MLW's workers don't have contracts. It's just a per date deal. 
You know, there's only a select few that have contracts in MLW. Um, oh, really? Well, that's how Brody King got out of it, and that's how PCO got out of it because they don't sign contracts because it, it's you're stuck because uh, the way I believe Court Bauer put it, you don't want to have the same people on TV every week, and then you're paying people to just do nothing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, um, and you're just gonna lose them. I mean, being MLW, you don't have the money to keep no. these fucking people. So you know, whatever. You're just gonna have it, them in contracts, and you're gonna have to release them because Court Bauer's not a fucking dickhead. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If they can make triple the money elsewhere, let them do it. Yeah, they got their first pay per view that I'm not gonna pay for coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, hey everyone, what we've been giving to you for free. You have to pay for it now. How ex- are you excited? Like, uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm not actually. Do you know what I'm saying? The yeah, no, I don't pay makes... enough close attention to want to buy a pay per view from them. Well, it just doesn't make any sense, you know. Like they announce it, like it's this big exciting thing. Like how is that exciting to me? Like you've already given me all these same shows, Battle Riot, and all these special shows free, and now I have to pay, and I'm supposed to be excited about it. <laughs> Fuck off, man. <laughs> you know? And if yeah. Impact and uh, <clears throat> Ring of Honor are getting 1,500 buys, what is this going to do? 900. Uh, 800 buys? 500 buys? Is, is so it what's really the worth fucking it? point? No, it's not worth it. No. Why not just put it on the way you've been doing it and just like, at this point, I think with a lot of those companies, just like, please watch this, even for free, you know? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's dumb, but uh, I like MLW. That I aside. do too. I do too. I got nothing against them. Um, Colt Cabana's "The Art of Wrestling" is coming to an end. Yep, there you go. That's that's one down. <laughs> one down. Now quit your fucking wrestling podcast, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Come for you. Um, it, he, dude, he fucked it up. He's like, I'm going to change the show. And then he killed it. And then that's yeah. it. I think that has... Dude, I used to listen to the show. And then he's like, I'm going to change it up because a lot of people are doing the interview shit. I'm like, okay. And then it wasn't very good after that. No. No, it wasn't. Like, I didn't like the new style where it's just him talking to random people for a few seconds. No. I was you a know? bigger fan of the interview. I miss, I miss the interviews. You know what I mean? His interviews were kind of the best interviews. Yeah, for yeah, because he knew him and he knew what to how to how to go approach a subject. You know what I mean? And not have him defensive or or whatever. You know? It, it, it's with Scott Norton. That's a great episode. Oh, dude, is it ever? Like the fucking uh, uh, speaking of the Udi, the uh, the the Deuce or Domino or whatever Super Domino. Uh, yeah. uh That that episode was fantastic. Cliff Compton. Right. So for me, I like the old version better. So I'm yeah. not, you know, but uh, he's hanging it up. I haven't listened since you know the old format. When it'd be a guest, I was interested in. I would check it out. Yeah. He changed the format. I quit listening. No, a hundred percent, hundred percent. I I agree. I, I'm I'm with you a hundred percent. I don't. His like numbers it. had to have fucking tanked out. Oh, for him to have stopped, I think so. Right. I mean, I think it was still successful. He'd be doing it still. But... Yeah, and then you also look at it too. Colt is doing full time Ring of Honor commentary now. He's also he was doing some stuff with NWA. I'm sure also it's being a, sued. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, so like I I would imagine his time is limited now. But yeah. So there you go. One down. We move up the spot one. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're now. We're now. Five steps yeah, away he, from being. He, he does talk about that, yeah, that he's so busy he wants to take a breath. So, understandable. Yeah, but at the same um, time, is I wish he didn't change it. Yeah, little weird things. Um, what the fuck are they called this guy now? I have to see. Isaiah Scott, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Oh, Shane Strickland. The former Shane Strickland is taking on Drew Gulak on 205 Live this week. What? Very random. I don't know that he's, I mean, I don't really watch NXT that much. I watched a little, I watched it this week, obviously, but I don't even know if that dude debuted on NXT yet. I I don't know either. I don't know either. So we were always, I remember we were always like, 
they're not gonna fucking put this guy on 205. We kind of joked like, oh, he'll be on 205 Live. He really is on 205 Live. Oh yeah, 100. percent Like they're not it. hiring people to do anything with them now. You know, mm. like they got their people that they're gonna push. The rest of these guys, they just gotta find a place for them. You know, I'm I'm waiting for the next big signee. You know, the people one that we can't wait to just get sent to NXT UK. You know, just <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I don't know. Hey, pal, how much do you like the UK? Because we do tours every now and then. Oh, I love the UK. Oh, you love it, do you? Oh, you can be in NXT UK. Yeah, that's good shit. It's good shit, dude. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess they just, like, sign you, create the illusion that you're wrestling in front of people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that people are watching you, which they're not, like, on 205. Yeah. Even though I heard G- Gable Gulak was a great match this week. Well, I mean, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was good, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. If a shit, you know, if, if a tree falls in the woods, does anybody hear it? Or is that how, if, is that how it says? Not if there's anyone there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it. Does it make a sound? There you go. That's it. <laughs> it's, it's what you're looking for. Yes. Right? Basically, and you know, just if nobody's watching it, it <laughs> really isn't that good. <laughs> you're a fucking you're a philosopher <laughs> Garth I think that was a haiku <laughs> oh. so there's that what else do we have um, uh, Mickey James set for knee surgery that's cool uh, Jeff Hardy is now a drunk again yeah we talked about that last week oh did we fair enough that's, that's, and we didn't know, we didn't really talk about the fact that it was like 11 a.m. when he was arrested. In a stairwell, because he was passed out. <laughs> <laughs> drunk from that. I mean, at least he didn't fucking drive drunk this time. Because we all yeah. know how that works out. But the best news of the week is Beyond the Rings picked up for a second season. Oh, no shit, I didn't even see that. Yeah, yeah it just got picked up. Uh, I read about it this morning, I believe. Well, they have more episodes they never put out, so. Well, and 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 I believe, yeah, because like I heard that a lot of people got interviewed about Benoit, maybe, but like, uh, that's got to be one of the ones in this season. You know what I mean? I also heard, you know, when they they put it out, and everyone was like, "Oh, what do you want to see?" No one really said Dino Bravo. I want to see that, but they, I think that's one they're working on too. Is Dino Bravo? I'd like to see a Dino Bravo one. There's there's some intrigue in that one, you know, with the. The, the 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 mob and what whatnot you know so the mob definitely fucking killed him <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah doesn't he killed execution style dude they like on his knees fucking, well, I don't know about that but they probably shot him like fucking ten times or some shit it's madness absolutely shot madness the fuck out of him dude yeah and the last bit of news I got is uh, fight for the fallen was down fourteen percent compared to fighter fest and uh, viewership. Mm. So, well, you know, I don't know. It was a good, it was an okay show. It was, it was a good show. Long. Way too fucking long. Yeah. You would do the whole show in three hours or fuck yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah 100%. 100%. We don't need four 20 minute matches in a row. You know what I mean? You don't need it. And then the main event being 30 minutes. Like, fuck. Come on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Raw has a, uh, Raw reunion on Monday. Yes. Because USA is angry about the low ratings. <laughs> <laughs> so they got to do an artificial bump. Yeah. Scheduled to appear Steve Austin, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. There's a ton. I'm not even going to read them all. No. But um, Sid, dude. 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 It's even softball season. They got him. They got him. Why wouldn't you just do, like, spread this out and just, like, have some of these people kind of show up here and there rather than put like 50 people on one show. Well, I mean, it's, it's something to be said too, that like that will get old fast too. If you just were to have old stars come up and it, it's kind of like to me, I feel like that's just going back to where you were. You need to make new stars. That's the whole point. And if you're just going to have old guys on for the pop, I mean, you do People are just going to remember the old guys. They they just need to to get behind somebody that the fans enjoy, 
and not make him into a cuck. <laughs> you know, that like, guy, it, just as a dude, is so fucking unlikable now. Yeah. I'm talking about wrong, it's not going right? to work. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah. going to work out for them either. Because it's no. Lesnar, a guy they've conditioned you to, you know, they condition the fans to hate him and he doesn't care and this and that. Part time champion. And it's a guy who's just a cunt on Twitter. Yeah. Like this week, he had a bunch of shit Did he? that he was saying that was just like fucking stupid. Oh, he's like, why it's easy to hate WWE was one thing. And then I was like, he, to people who say him and his, you know, Becky look awkward, they're jealous and this and that. He just, he's always out just blabbering fucking dumb shit. Yeah. I mean, he's a cock. It's a fucking penis. Um, that's your main event. So we'll see what happens <laughs> with this. Um, what do you, if you're, you're tasked with booking this reunion show, what is, how do you open the show? What's the first thing? Austin, hundred. It's gotta be. It's gotta be hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. That show needs to open with a fucking glass break. <clears throat> if it doesn't, what the fuck are you doing with your life? It needs to interrupt Michael Cole. Oh, Michael yeah. Cole, welcome to where well, we're here. Yeah. Austin. Yeah. 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 Fucking right. Comes down. Has a couple. Steve Weiser throws up some middle fingers. Cuts a promo. Maybe somebody comes out. Brand like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do Bear. I wouldn't want them to do Baron Corbin or Elias Sampson, but I assume that's what they do. One of those guys would come out, interrupt Austin. Austin stunners him. He gave him his fucking last name back. Holy shit! <laughs> what, well, his last name? Really? Sampson? The, yeah, it was Elias Sampson. Oh, Jim, Jim, you don't remember? You know what I want? I want to talk to Sampson. No, I know, but it's like, you know, they cut him off and you don't hear it for so long that you're like, what the fuck was it? You yeah, know? that was Elias Sampson. Because, like, I've always, like, I didn't want to delete that sound bite, but I haven't been able to use it because he's just Elias now. Yeah. I was going to come and, like, complain, like, about this whole uh, 24-7 thing at Comic-Con, but <sighs> I haven't had breakfast. I don't have the, <laughs> I don't have have the, the energy. I need some, I, I need some sustenance. Yeah, I got it's like I'm too good of a mood today to fucking do anything about. <laughs> but the main takeaway is that when oh, non fans think that wrestling is stupid, it's because of WWE. Yes, a hundred percent. Because it's because while doing an interview, our truth has um, the hurricane come out, tries to roll him up, and then you know does his dumb hurricane shit, and then you get uh, Drake Maverick comes out in a banana costume, and tries to roll him up on this stage on this panel. Yeah, who people who don't even know who he is, you know. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's 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 death is what it is. And I love that when they go places and make other people aware of how fucking stupid. They're like, oh hey, comic book fans, if you case, in case you didn't know, wrestling is fucking stupid, and you should laugh at it. Thanks, bye. <laughs> and see, and that's why I think people are so hard on AEW because they want an alternative that they can be proud to watch. But the problem is, when they tune in, they start seeing stuff that's just like I can't show anybody this because they'll think yeah. it's stupid. You know, librarians. So, yeah, exactly. So like that's why you know like AEW is getting a lot a lot more flack because like the better vast vast majority of the show is good, but you got these fucking shit bombs that are placed in strategic spots. It feels you know what I mean, and just you don't want to invite somebody over to watch it because you're afraid. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with WWE. Is like we don't want to be in that ilk you know i legit had that experience with a show but two shows ago when i was watching it with my buddy yeah and i'm like dude i'm sorry <laughs> i <Like, laughs> legit apologize I'm like dude i feel bad even like telling you to watch this god damn it. you know i just felt so fucking embarrassed yeah yeah no 100 percent, man 100 yeah. percent. So, uh, hopefully it wait. gets straightened out and we get less embarrassing wrestling you know? yeah yeah uh, but uh, that's about all I got for news. Yeah, no, I, I really, I really don't have anything else for news. Really, it was a real slow news week. A lot of G one though. <laughs> so yeah. So from here, what's going down on the Federation? Uh, the next episode, World WCW World War Three, nineteen ninety six, will be up on for everybody on Monday. It will be up for Patreon subscribers today. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a fun episode. Uh, I liked it. Uh, I mean. It's impossible watching one of those World War Three battle royals with the sixty man battle royal, but yeah, it, that's a chore and a half. But the ending's yeah. cool to the battle royal, 
and I mean, you get some Roddy Piper, some good promos. And do they uh, do they get entrances on that? Like no, they walk everybody down comes out at the same time. That sucks. I'd like yeah. to know who all the obscure people like. I'd like to just see a list of all the people who are in oh, there. Oh, dude, something. there is a list. Like if you if you go online, you can get a list. Like it's hard to to really just name it off right now. But like there's Jimmy Graffiti, Joe Gomez, um, Ciclope, uh, uh, oh Jack Boot. <laughs> uh, then there's uh, Jack Boot. Yeah, I think that's uh, Sergeant Pittman. I think he was named Jack Boot for a while or something. That's what I got from it, anyways. Uh, Bunkhouse Buck. Um, so it's just yeah, like who, what guys can we find? Yeah, know. yeah. Basically, you know, you had a lot of those guys, but then you know, everybody else in WCW. How know. many? Uh, how many like fucking barely did anything in the business? Fucking guys, right now are like, I had a match with fucking Vader <laughs> <and> Sting. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, just uh, World War Three nine and five. Yeah, man, the World War Three nine and five. When I was in that match with Sting, man, that was that was so good, so good. I they looked, overlooked me for uh, World War Three and nine and six, but Jimmy Graffiti <laughs> got in, so I understand. I understand. Jimmy, Jimmy Graffiti always stealing your book. <laughs> there you go. Check that shit out on the Federation feed, mofudge dot com, everywhere else podcasts are found. If you like this show. You fucking love that one too. On the Suplex City Limits Network side of things, uh, they live for horror. They got a new episode coming out in a few weeks, couple um, weeks. I totally, I'm, I spo- I'm supposed to be making the artwork, and I totally forgot about it. So thank you for the reminder. <laughs> they are watching the void. Yes, I really like the void. I seen, I, I watched that. I think last year or two years ago or something. Mm-hmm. Or I watched it. I, I really enjoyed it. It's a good horror movie. It's one of those ones that it was on all the lists of, you know, best horror movie of the year. Because I do love horror movies, and I got to go on those lists to find them. Because the good horror movies are never advertised anywhere. And The Void was really good. Yeah. I don't watch, I don't know if i watched a lot of horror movies lately. It's I like hard because a lot of them suck. The Creep movies. The Creep movies are good. Yeah, really they different are really kind good. of a Different kind of horror, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so check that out. They live for horror on the Suplex City Limits Network. Uh, they live is up right now. I've got good reviews for that too. I saw on on the Twitter. Fucking a. So that's good shit. Uh, Pay per view take two very soon. The ECW styled TNA um, Hardcore Justice 2010. Buddy, so it's coming. Uh, shit, fantastic, eh? Yeah. So we got that. It's all that shit uh, coming up. Uh, But uh, from here, and uh, let's take a dip in Mark Tank after a word from our sponsor. So remember the game store for all your video game needs. Cut! How was that, Stevie? (laughs) You know, to tell you the truth, Sam, it really stunk. Randy, come here. Bring bring my glasses. Now listen, I got the script in front of me here. And first of all, you guys don't mention in here that you support all four video game systems. You don't say anything about buy, sell, or trade. And you don't even mention that you get $3 off with this with this commercial. I mean, you guys even play video games? God. The fuck is a guy that pays his last $20 on crack cocaine. Is a guy that believes that OJ did do it. And a mark is each and every one of you, sir, son of a fucking bitch. A mark is every one of these sorry sons of fucking bitches. It's Mark Tank. Where we read Mark comments off social media as they are typed. And do be laugh at them, and it's a good time. <laughs> we laugh and laugh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Terry Ansel really likes it. Shout out, Terry. <laughs> he loves listening to Mark Tank while he's at the gym. Speaking of Terry, you see that fucking video that went around the 4th of July? Did I send it to you? Oh, Terry Belay in Walmart? <laughs> no. Oh. But, like, Terry! It's like some guy in a wheelchair. He can fucking barely move, and he like... <laughs> Like they help him light a firework and then he starts going off and he can't get his wheelchair moved. No? <laughs> no. 
Oh my god, dude. We should have that as a fucking drop on the an audio drop. This was... fucking black dude just yelling, Damn it! I ain't doing damn it! It's fucking amazing. Did you see that video of the guy in the bagel shop just getting fucking pwned? Just down. What is with that, dude? Do I, did you never seen that? No, I did, but oh. like. What the fuck? He's kind of. He was on like Jim and Sam this week. Really? Yeah. That's weird. He's just a fucking. He's just a weirdo who, um, I don't know what his fucking deal is. He is really small, though. Oh, yeah, he is. He's really small, but, I mean, come on. Like, yeah. He's a fucking weirdo. Oh. I found this here. I was like, fucking Terry. Back up, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> of course, though. Yeah, YouTube's got to have commercials, you know? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Google. It'll be a shitty quality, but... That's okay. I want to hear this. Hold the hands. You go. Okay. Come on. Oh my. Hey, hold on. 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 Two car come. He's down in the. He's, this guy's in a wheelchair with a super long punk, and this kid's helping him light this big firework. Yeah, the two car come two different ways. Wait, the guy talking is the guy in the wheelchair? No, the guy is filming. Okay. This guy, no, the guy in the wheelchair, probably can't. Bang talk. up, bang up, bang up, Terry. Put it reverse, Terry. Put it reverse. Oh, Lord. Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. What the fuck? What you doing, Terry? Terry, what you doing? Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> And now he finally gets, like, wheeled away from it. This fucking firework, like, blasting off right next to this fucking guy. <laughs> what are you What you doing, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> fucking great, man. Uh, anyway. Oh, you got to send that to me. <laughs> we were here for Mark Tang. Yes. All right. Okay, back to Mark Tang. Albert Adonisio Fourth says Kabuki Warriors should be fired and not never get another title shot as long as they are at WWE. Well, I mean, so they, get, they, get they got fired. fired. <laughs> I don't think they get title shots in the WWE after they get fired. And not never, ever get another title shot. And not never, ever? So he's basically said they should get a title shot, right? Basically yeah. when he said uh, not never, ever. Lexi Kaufman on Twitter. <laughs> yes, we encourage reactions, cheering, and booing, and chants. So she puts and between all of those. Real smart. Space yeah. period. Yeah. Right? She's... You're not a tight bitch. We don't encourage people to be rude. Aw. I'm sorry. So you're telling me that when you're an asshole, that's not encouraged. Like, when you play an asshole, that's not encouraging the people that you're directing the asshole comments to to be rude. Dude, you're that show, did you see that that, that part? I, I seen clips of it. I didn't see the whole match because guess what? I'm not fucking watching a 20-minute oh, no. Alexa Bliss match. Especially with Naomi and Carmella and Natalia. Like, come on, give me a fucking break. That was just, none of was this was their problem. Minutes? It was something, yeah, yeah. It was 24 minutes, I believe. 20 minutes or something. It was in the 20 let's, minute mark. Let's go Cena. Cena sucks, Chance. Yep. <laughs> Kinds of shit. This is awful. And and now to preface, right? Like this is none of those girls' fault. They should have never been put in this match. Especially right. for 20 minutes. Cuz like no well, matter if somebody's a bad worker, you should work around it. You shouldn't put them out there to be embarrassed. You know what I mean? Dude, a lot of people agree with her, though, and, like, there's this new age sentiment yeah. in wrestling. No, that's bullshit. That's like, oh, you are you should go there, and you should fucking, I don't know, you know, like, That's fuck just it, the WWE cool. fans, though. The WWE fans has the fans of the lowest common denominator, and those lowest common denominators will believe anything you tell them. And they just, they believe that people care what their feelings are. Guess what? Nobody gives a fuck how you feel. <laughs> just dumb it's like dude fucking go and do it in sound stages if that's what you want to do yeah yeah like have Put these little cues. mark fucking bitch boys from twitter just give them free tickets and shit yeah exactly because like then it would be <laughs> then it would be nxt fuck what i said it, bitch. <laughs> no i mean like that's it's been an argument that i, I was making year, like a year ago or so i've just given up on it the nxt crowd is horrible it's half the reason why i don't watch it no more yeah. Mario Basurto 
the Kabuki Warriors should be fined and suspended for their post-match treachery. What a terrible display of sportsmanship. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean... Because, so what this is about, I'm sure you didn't see it, Iconics versus Kabuki Warriors, the the Jap experience. <laughs> Good shit. That's from Vince's point of view. That's not me saying that. <laughs> I'm not a fucking racist like he is. Um, <laughs> they will sit and watch, I don't know, one of them, one of the Aussie cunts, gets herself counted out. And Asuka just sits there and watches this. Just sits there. Watches her get counted it out. Here's the fucking shit. And then it's like, oh, no, we we fucking won but didn't get the belts. Seriously, they did that. Yeah, that's... How is it supposed to root for you? They look like fucking idiots. Well, it, no. it's also to be said, like, why in the fuck are you doing title matches that end in count outs? You know, why? Build to the next thing, but... But the it, thing, it, though, all they know how to do is try to get heat. And in trying to get heat all the time, you just make everybody look stupid. I just think it's fucking crazy. It's like, yeah, they just sit there and watch them get counted out. And you're thinking it from two seconds on. You're like, oh, they're just going to stand out there. I mean, it's like the only one who doesn't know is the baby face. And they, yeah. they do that so much there. Where it's yeah. like the only one who doesn't fucking understand something is the stupidest fuck baby face. Mm -hmm. And anyway. it's unfortunate. But, I mean, that's why WWE is in the state that they're in today. Yeah. Ryan Avedesian. This goes to show the Iconics are a bunch of scaredy cats cause obviously they want to do everything they can to keep the titles, so they obviously chose to get counted out. If the match was no count outs, then the Iconics would have no choice but to fight Asuka and Kairi. You're, exactly, the lowest common denominator who will believe in anything, right? Who just yeah. goes with whatever they say. Yeah, no. It, like... it works on somebody. It does. This guy's like, I want to see a no count out match now. Well, and title matches should be no count out. You know what I mean? Like there shouldn't be a reason a for thing. that. It's not like a widespread wrestling thing. No, no. Like, like, In New Japan, if you get count out, you lose the belt. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? If if you're gonna have count outs in these matches, then then fuck. You know, have them mean something, not just be a heat magnet that you misuse and or don't use properly. You know, it's... I mean, but yeah. it's WWE. It's like talking to a fucking wall. Um, a boy, B. Rad Brad, sent this one over. Um, it's from this guy. Hashtag Jim lost his smile. <laughs> you? <laughs> oh, Jim fucking... Jim Ross. And his profile picture. This guy's a piece of shit. Oh, this is a His profile a picture is a picture... No, is Yeah, well, yeah. But his profile picture is when um, Ross fell or whatever and was fucked up. What an idiot. And anyway, he tweets, Jim Ross shouldn't even be able to call himself a WWE Hall of Famer. He is a traitor. <laughs> really? Jesus Christ. He yes. hates him that much. Why do you hate Jim Ross so much, bro? Well, I mean, because he's a WWE fanboy, and, and he's upset huh. that Jim Ross is not in the WWE no more. That's basically Dude. what it is. But little does he know, Jim Ross got fucked over by the WWE every, every time he was there. They just fucked with him and fucked with him and fucked with him. If anybody has no loyalty to Vince McMahon in the WWE, it should be Jim Ross. God damn. Oh, uh, let's see. Also, also, shout out to B-Rad Brad, who uh, seen uh, Casanova Valentine. They talked about uh, oh yeah their, their love of Suplex City Limits together. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a weird little connection. Right? It is a weird little connection, isn't it? Yeah. I like that. I like that somebody who listens to the show and heard somebody on it, you know, met him in a show. And so, yeah. yeah. It's like a total in an art gallery fucking deathmatch show. Yeah. You know, hey. Hey, if you, you want to be out. if you want to be the next, uh, you know, because remember, we, we were the rocket strappers before you, yeah. Edge and Christian were. We right? rocket strapped the shit out of Catherine with Valentine. God he came on right. and he was like not doing much, you know, and he's like, oh, man, I, my dreams are worth a tournament of death. Look where he's at now. Yeah. Come on, Suplex City Limits. Bam, tournament of death. Are the two are the two related? I don't know. Come try it out yourself. Yeah, Let's I actually don't. Happens. I don't either. I don't, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to talk to any wrestlers. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, we have JT, JTG on. I haven't even heard about his app <laughs> that he was plugging. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking weird, right? Yeah. I don't like that shit. That's why like, we used to always have guests and shit. And now I'm still open to like our bros, you know, yeah. like Lance Levine. You need to come hang out yeah. with us sometime. Yeah, Lance. Um, 
fucking you know i'm trying to think of some more I'd, I'd love for I, honestly i'd love for will and lance to come on honestly mm. that would be fun uh, why can't i think of fucking because <laughs> oh link's kinetic I yeah talked to him yeah forever. scotty yeah our old homies when they swing by travis yeah you know that's about it i don't want to meet anybody new i don't want to talk to anybody new <laughs> no I, <laughs> I get that 100 percent. it's just like well other podcasters is one thing but like i don't i don't know it's like it just sucks it's tough it's like you're like oh my god what am i gonna do with jtg it's like we couldn't pass it up because like you're dumb but like it's, yeah. it's so fucked it was like what am i gonna do it's it sucks don't go back and listen to it <laughs> no no uh let's see adora islam his last name is islam <laughs> i wish seth rollins losses at SummerSlam. he don't deserved this opportunity roman reigns deserved this opportunity oh Fair enough. So much for Roman Reigns being over like gangbusters after cancer, eh? Yeah, I guess. Uh, Thomas Silk Harvey. They had a battle royal to determine who goes against Lesnar at SummerSlam because they can't fucking build anything. Oh, God. <laughs> so they get rid of their automatic you know, rematch thing just to do dumb shit to get the guy right back there. Every fucking time. And every show, it's like the women's divisions, right? <laughs> every show, they get done. They just do, like, a match with a bunch of people to determine who the number one contender is because they can't build one. They can't fucking build one. Yeah. Sorry, I I giggled a bit because uh, I was going through the Suplex City Limits Twitter to see if I could find mm-hmm. or a, a Facebook page. I seen what you posted last night. Nothing's worse page. Nothing's worse than getting an Uber and smelling like an ashtray. And somebody replied, oh, yeah. imagine how the woman felt when their belt smelled like jizz. It's like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. Dried, <laughs> crusty jizz, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, Thomas Silk Harvey should have had all 10 superstars exit the ring at the same time over the top rope and made it an 11-person free-for-all match at SummerSlam. But let's be realistic. We all knew Rollins was going to win. Boo. Yeah. Fucking guy. These marks. Yeah. Marks these days. Marks these days. Uh, Vinny Castagna says Seth Rollins is the worst wrestler ever. The writers probably said if we don't make him win, he'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Michael Quing. Um, what the fuck? Out of the free-for-all would emerge Rollins, and the stage was set for a truly explosive confrontation for the Universal title. Now the relationship tag team just doesn't matter for Seth Rollins if he still wants the championship because Roman Reigns is on top of this world. Yeah, yeah, because he's, he's, the, he's that, that big dog, right? Fatic got him. I hate Brock Lesnar. He is not human. I love <laughs> Seth Rollins. I wish to him for win Universal Championship title. Keep rolling, Seth Rowling. Yeah. Keep rolling, 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 oh. Seth Rowling. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell do I have? I have other ones? I think we're good. That's this week's Mark Tank winner. Oh, that was? No, I got oh. one. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, oh, I missed it? All right. Asher Ray Moyo. Breaking news. The man will lose the title at summer, and Seth will lost also. Lynch and Seth are coming to South Africa for honeymoon. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Now, and why is everybody dumber for listening to it? Who the fuck goes to South Africa on your honeymoon? Fuck. I think there's like the, one of the highest concentrations of AIDS. Right? Right? Yeah. And plus, like, they're not even engaged, are they? <laughs> well, no. I fucking hope not. Have they been fucking for more than, a mo- like, six months? Like, fuck. Yeah. So there you go. Wow. There is that. Uh, what else we got? Anything? For for the show itself? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we could uh, mention, like, what did you think about the Bray Wyatt debut? Oh, I thought it was awesome. I did, too. Well I thought that was well done really well. They did, like, the lighting was good. I liked uh, the, the atmosphere behind it. The mask looks killer. I hope the mask doesn't come off. I, I'd like for it to stay. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, he, he looks like he's in decent shape as well, so. He is in good shape. We've yeah. seen that already. So, I mean, let's 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 see where it goes, man. I'm down. But reality is it's WWE, and it's probably all downhill from here. Yeah, yeah. You're probably right. You're He'll beat Balor, right. so that's good. But yep. he needs to actually keep winning. It was like when Bray Wyatt came up. You think that people on the main roster fans weren't like, wow, this is fucking awesome. It was awesome until he lost to everybody. Yeah. And then it wasn't awesome. Yeah, 100%. So, I mean, that's that. But like, I mean, I, I'd assume I, I'm, I'm, I'm welcome to see more. That's the only thing I've seen from Raw for, for months now was that. And it was a YouTube clip, of course, but like, that's all I really needed to see. For me, you've got all these fucking people, right? You've got a zillion guys on your roster. I would you'd use Wyatt as just a once-in-a-while kind of dude. He could beat Balor here and then yeah. move to something else. Yeah. But he could beat that person and disappear for a month. Or, and then or show just up, go back and do know? a couple Firefly segments backstage. He doesn't need to be in ring. I think that they need to leave that in the past. No, I don't mean like, no, like like the Firefly segments, they can evolve to be in what he is now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not saying like do a Firefly Funhouse, but like do the equivalent of what you do with his character that is now. So like have just, you, know, you still have a couple of the puppets around if you wanted to, you know, just like in a dark room or something, but like. Figure something out there. He doesn't need to go into the ring. He doesn't need to be cutting those long, boring promos because that's all they no are, problem. long, boring promos. Nothing in the ring. No. No. Only the thing only... in the ring should be what he's doing now or matches. That's it. When he's that character, he shouldn't say anything. I, I, agree. I, I If you did this correctly, he wouldn't need to say anything for months, you know? But, yeah. But, yeah, if you, you just we, when he does come back in the ring or something for a feud, for a match, it's something he's going to win. And then yeah. he goes away for a month. Yeah, promos, whatever. But, you know, you yeah, know. <laughs> Will it happen? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. You got anything else? Um, do I? I, don't know. I watched I Ron so. SmackDown, but it's fucking... I didn't watch them. I skimmed them. You know what we never spoke a word about? What's that? Extreme Rules. I don't give a fuck. I, I watched. Either. I didn't watch I only, it. I tuned in live, and it was like halfway through the main event, and I watched that. Yeah, I, I didn't it. watch a second, man. I, I, I do. Yeah. I would like to see Cesaro in black. I would. Um, oh, I might go back do. and see that. You messed up, man. Here, yeah. Let me let me ruin that for you. Okay, go for it. Cesaro versus Black on SmackDown. We're gonna have a rematch. Okay. <laughs> but they come to the ring. Match starts. It goes to commercial in about forty-five seconds. They wrestle through the commercial on the small little screen in the corner. It comes back, it goes one minute, and it ends. Black beats Cesaro. Wow. So, yeah. Now, I meant their, their, their I know. Extreme Rules match. But but now it doesn't matter, right? No, no, 100%. I don't need to watch it now because they've already fucked it around. So I don't watch shit that's like, if it doesn't fall within the current week of the show... I don't mind watching it. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, Andrade beat Cruz in a minute, also on SmackDown. And then he goes and eggs. He has a great match. Yeah. Oh, Liv Morgan, dude. She loses to Charlotte, gets out of the ring mad, grabs the mic, and says, uh, when I come back, I'm going to be real and drop the mic. Fucking idiots. I don't know. This chick is terrible and shit. But a lot of people really like her for they some do. reason. But I mean, it's I don't know. She's why. cute. So That's all your it idea is. is like, we're gonna do something with her, but we're gonna change everything up. That's dumb. All you needed to do to get her over was push her. <laughs> That's it. That's all you needed to do. Push her as a baby face. Yeah. Because people cause like her cute. anyway. I don't know. Well, it, yeah. it's because she's cute. That's why people like her. She like, mm. you know, like I I I eat peanut butter out of her asshole. You know what I mean? I just snorted flakes, dude. Her exactly. fucking dandruff flakes. Exactly. I'd make tea out of her dandruff flakes. <laughs> I'd make tea out of her dead skin cells. I don't, like Paul said, I I drink her bath water, right? <laughs> Did you see a video of that guy who uh, vaped that uh, Instagram lady's bath water? Oh fuck yeah, dude. 
<laughs> what a fucking fool. Society is uh yeah fucking bankrupt. Uh but yeah. See that that's dumb. You know. That's like Yeah, that was SmackDown. Raw. I don't know, nothing. <laughs> no, I didn't I mean yeah, you had fucking Bray Wyatt. That's about it. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, that's it. Uh you have anything else before we rock uh, out of here? I don't think so, no. Honestly, I uh, I'm pretty tapped out on the news or whatnot. I mean, I'm just feverishly checking the site here to see if there's anything else to say, like any any uh, any breaking news. But well, you can check. I'll give us some shout outs. Yeah, I want to give shout outs to our fucking podcasting brothers at In Search of My Lost Soul, hosted by Bobby Anthem. It's a new episode out now. I haven't got to listen to yet. I have. It's a it's a very nice take on uh, some obscure music references, and I'm always down for obscure music references. Mm. Like it's Check nothing it you'd ever heard of before, and and it's refreshing. Mm. It's kind of a fucking podcast, unlike anything I've ever really listened to. I'm so into it. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's, so into it. Yeah. Um. That kind of like fucking introspection and shit like on a podcast it's crazy uh very good so wrestling overdose with shaheen uh i'm gonna be on that show at some point bobby blades was on the newest one so <laughs> that, that's pretty cool yeah he has a rotating cast of co-hosts oh really yep uh get in the corner of course in human experience shooting the shiznit the strap wrestling's high marks regular regularly scheduled hostility comedy suplex much love out there to mikey g uh dirt sheet dudes, dirt sheet and, dudes. Uh, of course they live for horror so shout out to all of you also uh nuclear heat graphics all kinds of pro wrestling horror artwork he does custom artwork, fantastic shit. Get it any size you like, all kinds of sizes for prints. Very good stuff. Check that out. Uh, but, yeah, if you got nothing else, I'm going to nope. get out of here. And nothing else at all. Fucking eat some French toast and eggs. I did see, uh, I did come up with a picture of that big tall dude in NXT dressed up as Krang. What? Yeah. Like legit? Well, no, like somebody photoshopped him to be like Krang. Okay. Episode pick maybe. Uh, it's 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 all watermark with a bunch of shit. It's really messy looking. It's a Snapchat picture. Okay, never mind then. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh I think that's gonna do it. Playing us out this week. Uh I kinda thought of that last week. It's like I know a lot of people in bands um and shit, so why am I not helping them out, giving them some love, you know? So I'm gonna yeah. start doing that. Eventually, when I get my new band going, I'll pimp my shit at the end of the show. <laughs> I'm a hoover. A, a fucking dirty hoover. Here. Yeah. Uh, a band that I used to fucking be in. Uh, they changed the name. I uh, got some new members and shit, but uh, Lords of Sorcery. This song is Opus number five off their new album, Tonight We Conjure. came out earlier this year. You can buy it at Bandcamp. You can listen to it on Spotify. Show them, if you like it, show them some love. Tell them you heard it here. And uh, that'll do it. So, as always, until next week, we thank you very much for listening. We will be back to talk all the shit of next week. And may you get all the dick and her pussy you desire. Remember, a winner is you. And be excellent to each other. <laughs> Oh
loved one has had thoughts of self-harm, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. separates me from the projects is a fucking chain link fence. And Tyler Bond! Have anything else to talk about on this? About this show? Yeah. You want to talk about Mil Mascos more? <laughs> Welcome, thank you for downloading episode 223 of Suplex City Limits for July 20th, 2019. Puff Puff Pass, it's your boy, the King of Bong style, Jim Vicious, and he is the original Canadian Destroyer, my co-host. I, I did it so horribly last time, I'm not even going to try this time, I'm just Tyler Fudge. There you go. Suplex City Limits, available for listening or find podcasts are found. You can follow me at the show Twitter at Suplex City Limit. Follow Tyler at the Federation. If you like the show, consider supporting us by picking up a t-shirt at Pro Wrestling Tees. You can also donate on our Patreon, become a producer, like bad motherfuckers. You should see the size of his organ field, Caleb Morganfield. He's not balding, Christopher Spaulding. See money. Plain Vanilla Martin Corns, our buddies at the Smack It Down podcast. Check them out everywhere podcasts are found. They cover a lot of shit we don't with cool Australian accents, mate. <laughs> nice. Deshaun, not as racist as Terry Balea. Infamous Chris Savage, Kick-Ass Keith Martin, the Rice and Roni, Jabroni, Tyloni, and Sani and Jax, and Jumpin' Jeremy Fultz. Whew. Over on the <laughs> over on the PayPal side, Suplex City Limits at Gmail. You can also donate there if Patreon's not your bag. Uh, like motherfucking Big Body Sam, Aaron Echoes, 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 and deep in your snatch, 
It's Cody fucking Hash. So, this week on the show, we will be laughing at some marks in Mark Tank. We've got the top three. We've got a bunch of news. We're talking to talking tons of Japan. Yes. I mean, it's all Japan. Like, I think the, the closing song already needs to be, I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. I, I was going to keep the shit going uh, <laughs> that I've been doing with uh, plugging, you know, friends' bands. Yep. So I don't know. Maybe I mean, we'll do that. Hey, I already had one planned. That's, I get it. <laughs> you know, there's less chances of getting dinged with a copyright. We're definitely not going to get dinged. <laughs> no. Uh, so, yeah, we got all that and a whole lot more. Someone posed the question to me on Twitter this week. Um, how do you do a wrestling podcast and not cover the most popular product? This is how, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. Have just you respond, not listened? Just respond with a link to the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, here you go. Glad we gave up on that ghost, because a lot of people haven't, you know? Oh, yeah, no. It, like, will will I watch the the anniversary rod next week? I'm well, gonna yeah. watch bits and pieces of it for sure. You know, like I, I definitely have plans to see that. Um, but then I'm done again. Till yeah. you know, yeah. like let's see when Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff, you know, see what they do, and if it if it seems cool, I might come back. If not, no. I drug us into this conversation way too early. <laughs> I actually, did skim Raw and SmackDown, and I guess we can talk about it maybe later. But first... I've seen I've seen One Piece. There you go. But first, as always, started off with the top three after a word from our sponsors. Hulkamania is bringing Celebrity Championship Wrestling to CMG. So now I gotta get Danny Bonaducci, Dennis Rodman, <laughs> Dustin Diamond, <laughs> Tiffany, Butterbean, Aaron Murphy, Frank Stallone, Nikki Siri, Todd Bridges, and Trishel Canatel. Hulkify. CMT presents Hulk Hogan Celebrity Championship Wrestling. Available on CMT On Demand. Only on CMT, brother. Two Plex City Limits. Top three. 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 Suplex City Limits Top 3, our top three matches of the week. You know, that... Hulk Hogan celebrity wrestling. Yeah. It would have been something if they got like real celebrities or <laughs> athletic yes. people. Like, are you fucking Danny Bonaducci? He was the best one, actually. Danny. I know. That's the crazy thing about it. Danny Bonaducci was the star of that show. Um, it, I mean, having Trishel from the real world, you know, like, really? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's the epitome of anti celebrity right there. Screech, Screech, Todd Bridges. Todd Bridges yeah. more than Screech, if you ask me, because like he was second fiddle to fucking Gary Coleman when Screech was saved by the bell to me. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't suggest watching that so, but uh, I do suggest uh, Brian Zane's yes. wrestling with regret video on it. It'll give you all you need to know in a small, you know, you'll save yourself the time. Anyway, yes. why don't you take us through this week's top three? Well, let's see. Let's start with the the furthest away from where we are today. Oh, buddy, I'm such a poet. Well, uh, let's end with the best one. Exactly. Well, exactly. Definitely. Be exactly. Hundred percent. But Kenta taking on Tanahashi on night three of the G1, I thought was a really good showing for Kenta, and and the way that they they played the the match out, and at the end having Tanahashi not shake Kenta's hand was was a, a really nice nod that you know this is going to go forward and maybe there's going to be a good story told here because you got Kenta who was the man in Noah and Tanahashi who was the man in New Japan you know it, it's a story that tells itself so mm. yeah really good shit loving Kenta in the G1 yeah yeah it's promo that he cut after that match against Tanahashi too and just like <laughs> Hopefully some of you guys remember me. <laughs> One guy starts walking out. He's like, that guy, he doesn't remember me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Get this fucking great this year. But good match? Yeah, it was. Uh, our second match on the top three would be Will Ospreay taking on Kota Ibushi. And mm. really, you got two guys coming into this match. Both are hurt. One significantly more than the other. Uh, Kota Ibushi having a sprained ankle, and Will Ospreay having stingers at 28 years old. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like I said, man, there's no worse opponent to have with it when your neck is fucking with you than Ibushi because yeah. he hates necks as much as he hates vaginas. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. And and it, it's you got on the other end of the spectrum, number two on that list, I'd say it would be Naito, and he hates necks just as much as he hates that IC title. So. Yeah, he does. He hates necks, too. This match was fucking crazy, man. It was. It, Will Ospreay got dropped on his head a couple times. One on like uh, one of those reverse tombstone motherfuckers. Yeah. Just straight on the fucking top of the skull. Couple. Uh, oh, go, for, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go for it. That's it. Oh, I just just clarify once again that I don't care when people when wrestlers decide they want to do this. They know that we all say they shouldn't do that. And they know the consequences. And if they want to fucking drop themselves on their heads for their fucking art, then I guess go for it. You know, I'm I'm not one to uh, to to judge. You know, I think a lot of people spend a lot of time complaining about spots that people do. Well, they know, and, and that's the know. thing. As kids, you know what I mean. What did you want? You wanted the crazier, 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 crazier. You know, so like, it, 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 if people come to and see that, like, if it draws eyes. They're gonna keep on doing it. The only way, like, if you want, if you want it to go away, just like not watch it. How do you do that? Like, come on. I assure you, Will Osprey is well versed in what happened to the Dynamite Kid. Yes. Yes. You know, he knows. Hundred so. percent. You want to keep doing it, then fuck you. I guess that's your yeah. deal. But but hey, he slowed down. Great match. Hundred <laughs> percent. It was fantastic. I got like it was. It's 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 hard to watch at points. You know what I mean? It's like because you don't want to watch somebody die in the ring, like. You know, we've all well, maybe we all haven't, but I've seen like the Masawa match, and like that, it's mm. not fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. But uh, no, the match was fantastic. There, they it's Ibushi and Osprey. They they had a lot of callbacks from the Wrestle Kingdom match a couple months ago, uh, where like uh, Osprey was was stood up in the tree of woe instead of Ibushi, and he's toying with him. I thought that whole exchange was fantastic. Um, yeah. And then the story about Osprey's neck was cool too, just to put it into the storyline. For sure. And then we have the, the match. match of the week, the yeah. match of the G one, and I'm going to say match of the year contender. Honestly, I fucking love this match. Hey, we'll we'll see how it holds up with everything else before the year ends. But I mean, it's up there. Because for me, it's what I like in wrestling. It's not the, you know, a lot of times there's like, oh, this is the best match. And it's like, you know, Okada Omega fucking wrestling for five hours or something. It's like, eh, that's not really to me what's great. This is the shit. Brawling all, like all over the place. A lot of fucking highest spots. Back in the ring. Good shit. I don't know how long this match was. Do you? 15 minutes, maybe? Uh, no, it was, in the, it was past 20 minutes. Well then, they did it fucking right because I wasn't bored at all. No, it was it was a really good match versus Hangman Page, and uh, <laughs> Kip Sabian. Fucking Kip Sabian was a 19 minute match that I like. Fucking, I felt like went forever. So. Yep, yep. No, 100. percent Dude, we got some good reviews on our Fight for the Fallen review. We did. We did some. Uh, I mean, come on. I mean, the 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 cream rises and the truth is told at some point in time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't know, now you know. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say yeah. about that. But thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this match was fucking awesome. I love that. And now, match of the year contender, I will say. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's probably a stretch, but. Yeah, I, hey, you know what though? It, you're not the only person saying that this, this was a fantastic match. You know, so. Um, in comparison, there are some some hefty ones to live up to. At least, in my opinion, I I do believe that uh, uh, Omega and Tanahashi was fantastic at the G1. I loved that match. Um, and then, as well as Cody and Dustin, the story told in that match is going to be that's a contender for match of the year as well. But this match, it was what so are the much contenders fun. Contenders really this year. Well, that well that's what I'm saying. The like Cody and Dustin, uh, yeah. uh, Omega Tanahashi. Um, that, from that, my Wrestle for me. Kingdom, yeah. Yeah, from Wrestle Kingdom. Um, mm. I don't know. There's not a whole lot really that's jumping out to mind, but those two are are, are up there. There's nothing from WrestleMania. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sure there's um, Dragon Lee. Who was it? Osprey and and Ibushi from Wrestle Kingdom was great. Uh, mm. For forgetting any. 
Hit us up. Let us yeah. know. Yeah. We need to start doing like like a half year contenders and narrow that down so we're ready for the end of the year awards. Well, when we did the end of the year awards last year, like, oh, this year I'm going to keep a list of all of my shit. <laughs> yeah. So at the end, I'm not fucked trying to remember what matches happened. Well, too bad. Too too bad. I think you should do a poll on on because you got the more Twitter followers. You should do a poll and say how much you know who. What is your nominations for a match of the year so far? Oh, we just could do it in the group too. We could. The group you'll get a lot better answers, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he just fucking burned out a bunch of people. <laughs> he just fucking burned them. Well, I mean, no, like I don't mean it like that. I mean that like the group yeah. is closed. There'll the, be less people being cocks and Yeah, exactly. Like, and just like somebody coming in with Brock Lesnar and fucking Rollins is like, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, dude, I love Umino being like Moxley's mm. personal fucking young boy. Yeah. And then having Moxley's ref being uh, Red Shoes. Yeah. So, like, that's his father. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, like, did you see how he walked by and he just gave Red Shoes a big hug? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking great, man. <laughs> um, I f- love the way it's from the go. This match was great. Ishii comes out, just goes right in there and just, like, head to head. Oh, yeah. Fucking posturing and shit. Like, Holy shit, like, it just started, and already this is more interesting than 90% of the wrestling matches you watch every week. Yeah, no, 100%. Fucking awesome, man. Well, I mean, because you've got a guy that you've, if you haven't seen Moxley before WWE, you hear these myths of how he was crazy and all this shit, and then it's going up against, you know, the equivalent of crazy in New Japan, which is Ishii. And I was going to wait until after this match, but dude, honestly, the guy is the hottest thing in pro wrestling right now. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. There's there's something to be said on whether or not you elevate him past Omega for AEW right now. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, you like, do. Yes, you fucking do. <laughs> so, like, if you took Omega and do, you know, because, like, not a lot of people in America know in the vast majority who Omega is and what he's all about. Sure, his matches are great, um, but, like, if you did a little bit of a slow burn with Omega and have him come back around maybe... And and a rubber match with Moxley before the title after Moxley beats Jericho or something. You know what I mean? I just I know that it's going to be a problem because you know, dude, to start a new wrestling company and their first thing is like two WWE guys, Jericho and Moxley. I get that. I wouldn't want to do it either. But in this t- situation, I don't know. I don't know that you don't just have Paige beat fucking Jericho. I understand that, you know, obviously you want Jericho to be your first champion, to come out on TV with it and shit, but I don't know. See, I, I, mean, I, I feel you should have a heel start uh, because yeah. it's always better for a chase than... Because, like, I feel like then you're just going to... You, you'll set Adam Page back, I feel, if he won that title. And then he's just... No adversity whatsoever is just taken on the rogues gallery when I think he would be better suited if he chased that title. Well, yeah, it's going to be Jericho. I mean, you know, yeah. but who's Jericho's first opponent? It's going to be probably Omega. The winner of Moxley and Omega, I'd right, say. Right. Oh, nice. I assume Omega. Uh, yeah, I, mm, we'll see. <laughs> for, me, for me, like we've talked about on here lately, the guy's just super cold. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I get nothing on it. It's like, yeah, great yeah. matches, but. He just walks out and he's just like a dude. But his opponents haven't been, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? They, they're not sure he had that match against Jericho at double or nothing. But at the same time, you're kind of limited with Jericho. Jericho's more of an act now. He, he's he's not that in ring prowess that it's not there as much anymore. So like he relies on little things, and sometimes he relies on those little things too much, like the camera work and. And that bullshit that he does in every match, I think that should be spared for for certain times. But, um, yeah, <laughs> he hasn't really been given those those workers that are elevated and are looked at with prestige and can work. You got Sema who can work, but I mean, Jim Cornette said it best: "Is like, Sema's not going anywhere in America." No. Yeah. Nowhere, he, he, it's you can push him all you want. It's not going to happen. But yeah, with this match, um, they do the posturing. They start just throwing forearms at each other, and the crowd just yelling with everyone. Hi, hi, hi! It's back and forth. <laughs> like 
fucking awesome. Yeah, Brawl into the yeah. crowd. They're up on the fucking out in the seats and shit. It was awesome. One thing too, Kevin Kelly, who is my announcer of the oh, year last. Wait no, wait no, hold on, hold on. I just gotta tell you, this is the best call from Kevin Kelly's Death Rider. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he fucking just is so good. He explained at one point explains. Well, Red Shoes is not throwing this match out because the the crowd would be pissed at him. Yeah. And these guys would be pissed at him. And it's like just little things of like, in case you're wondering why this isn't a DQ, here, you know? Yeah. And they also explained or, that John Moxley asked, asked it to be a street fight. You also, know what I mean? so, New Japan, you can use weapons outside the ring. That's the deal, yeah? I mean, that always uh, seems to be the deal. I think that like in, in big high-profile matches, they let it go a little bit. If it were a nothing match and somebody used a chair, it probably would get thrown out. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't, it, it's 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 vague. But usually, if they're outside, they get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this was fucking really good. How about Ishii off the top to the oh, outside through a table? Holy my shit! God, he, he flies, man. Like he he. <laughs> He flies, but he drops <clears throat> so yeah. fast. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he he jumps, he gets that elevation, but as soon as he's ready to fall, he literally just goes down. Yeah. <laughs> but like he, it looked like he hit Moxley with a ton of bricks, but it was fantastic. Uh, they broke that did... fucking Japanese table for sure. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the like safe headbutts thing that they're doing? They're doing it's like low, lower speed headbutts. I yeah. thought it was awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, they're, they're safe. They're, they still look fucking pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you can, if you shot them from a further away angle, I think they'd look better instead of coming in from a close up and just like actually seeing how soft they're doing it. But, yeah. um, yeah, if you shot it from behind, you know what I mean? And you could see she's back of his head and then you see Moxley come forward, you know, you, with Moxley's size, it just looks so intimidating, you know? So it would just look a lot better, but yeah, I like those headbutts. You see, you see, kicks out of the first finish. What is the Death Rider? Yeah. It was yeah, Death just Rider. A, a snap Death Rider. <laughs> it's a replacement for J Driller. <laughs> yeah, fucking awesome though. Eventually gets him with a uh, an extra fucking intense one. Yes, gets the win, which um, is what he's yeah. calling the paradigm shift in AEW. Is the elevated mm -hmm. Death Rider. Yeah, Death Rider. <laughs> it's gonna be a thing now. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get that isolated next time I. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs>